I had some chemistry misconceptions as a kid that um, kept me awake at night. I used to have big fears that the wrong stuff put together could either explode or give off dangerous gases, among other problems. So I, I was fascinated, I still am, I was always fascinated by the process of electrolysis. And I thought that if you had a big enough battery with, with very little resistance, and you placed it into a container of water, it would spew out so much hydrogen and oxygen that it could explode, kind of like the Hindenburg explosion. And I had this concept of uh, maybe if you had a big enough battery and you had a large enough container of water, you could maybe power a, a car, or maybe you could launch something into space with all that hydrogen and oxygen because I knew rocket fuel was made of hydrogen and oxygen. So I imagined this big space shuttle just full of water with a big battery on it. And then you count down from 10 and at the, at the, at the hit, at, when you hit zero, the battery touches the water. It makes hydrogen and oxygen and lift off. And uh, I, I had an image of that. I, I remember trying to build one at one point to no avail. And then I learned about um, the halogens, and that scared me to death. I used to think that, I knew um, water was fluoridated, and I thought if you got fluoridated water into contact with a battery, it would spew out fluorine gas. Um, or if you got table salt um, into a container, uh, into, a ba into a battery, it could make chlorine gas. Actually, it's pretty hard to make chlorine gas uh, from table salt that way. It tends to make hypochlorites and hypochlorous acid. Uh, very little chlorine gas. I tried to fumigate uh, my uh, bathroom with chlorine gas because I'm staying at an Airbnb when I first got here. And it was a little bit more challenging than you would think. And um, obviously, the, uh, the other halogens as well. Bromine, I heard, was pretty dangerous. Um, iodine, you can almost consume that, uh, even as the halogen itself. Uh, but I didn't realize that. I thought all halogens were pretty dangerous. I used to think that um, if you had uh, sulfur and it oxidized in the air and then attracted moisture, you could make sulfuric acid. And then the sulfuric acid could then react with uh, some of the halogens, right? So, for example, it's sulfuric acid is a strong oxidant, and I thought if you got that in contact with stomach acid, it could oxidize that into chlorine gas. I had a big, big, big fear of that. I thought if you had one of the elements that were really stable, like maybe gold or silver, or maybe some of the noble gases, and you made a compound out of it, conversely, that compound ought to be very unstable, right? Because it wants to revert back to the element, and I thought that could explode. Right. So I thought uh, if you re released a helium balloon into the sky, and I used to think helium balloons left the Earth altogether, believe it or not. I, that, that's how naive I was about that. And it reacted with maybe solar energy or something like that to make a compound. And then eventually that compound somehow rains back to Earth. It could explode, right? I had, I had huge visions of what, what would happen to helium balloons after they were, they were let go. Uh, I recommend not letting go of helium balloons because we are running out of helium. The balloon itself might not leave the Earth, but the helium tends to. And obviously, uh, the balloon comes back to Earth, and who knows where it goes, right? Animals consume it, so I recommend not doing that. Anyways, huge misconceptions.